Hey y'all, it's Chris and Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. And we are cooking like Mama did today. We are making chicken and dumplings for our company today. I thought I'd do it live. It's been a few days since I made them for you guys. Got on my Atlanta Braves jersey. That's Chris's, of course. My Atlanta Braves. And jersey. who is this right here, Chris? Tell him he's not working. He don't play. That's the last time I bought a jersey when yeah. Hayward was playing. So me. what year do you think that was? Oh Lord, uh, it's since we moved to Dallas, so it's two thousand eight, seven, seven, something. Right. I've well, been watching Braves since we got cable yes. in nineteen seventy eight. Well, <laughs> Every we're gonna year. start off. I boiled the chicken yeah. the other day. I'm using half of the chicken meat and these dumplings. I'm going to use the other half for another meal for us. We're having company over tonight, so I'm not making a huge pot. So that we would have a lot of leftovers. But you do, I've got my chicken in here warming up. For some reason, it wanted to kind of freeze in my refrigerator. My refrigerator was so cold. So we're letting that warm up right there. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. And then we've got some broth going over here. If you make dumplings, you're going to have plenty of chicken broth. And I happen to have some fresh chicken broth from a chicken that I boiled. Yep, she usually boils one a week. Yep, I boil plenty of chickens. And so this broth has got some good bone broth in it. It's nice and gelled. That's good stuff. If you don't have good bone broth or good, you know, good chicken stock is really what it is. It's not broth. Uh, you can add a little butter to it and it makes it taste good too. But this has got plenty of fat in it. You can see it floating on the top of it. And so there's no reason why I should add any butter to it. Um, you're going to bring this to a boil before you drop your dumplings. That stock needs to be good and boiling. So we're going to put a lid on it right quick. We're going to get over here and make a few dumplings. Now when I make chicken and dumplings, I'm going to make um, I'm going to make plenty of dumplings because you know they kind of shrink once you get them in the pan and they cook. This is a half cup. I'm going to use a two cup recipe and we'll roll them out in two different uh, sections. Because usually when I do dumplings, I do one cup at a time. This as far as cutting them out. Is this your first cookbook? That is my first cookbook. We're also going to make them some microwave peanut brittle because they watched it the other day and they really want some. And I'm going to make them some. Now, uh, I'm going to use one can of cream of chicken. That's one thing my mama and granny didn't do, but I do it, and it's good. So I like to do it. You can leave it out if you want to, but if you want it to be even better, throw it in there. We're going to put some shortening in our flour. And we're just making a biscuit dough. The only difference in this dough and a biscuit dough that I do, do for dumplings. I don't use buttermilk when I make dumplings. I use regular milk, which we called sweet milk growing up. Mama would either say, hand me the sweet milk or hand me the buttermilk. That's just what we said. And uh, so a lot of people, when they watch me, they're like, I don't even know what sweet milk is. And when we were growing up, if Mama said cream, she meant evaporated milk. We never had fresh cream. Um, like people cook with today, and I'm sure they had it back a thousand years ago because they had cows, hmm. but that's just not something we had growing up. We got a we got a problem. What? There's some people on here saying go Astros. Is that our Texas team we're playing? Yes. Can oh. you believe they would do that? Well, we have a lot of Texas fans. <laughs> and you know what? I love all I'm of glad. Y'all. I'm glad that we're playing a Texas team. But... I know it is really nice that yeah. we have Texas and yeah. Georgia in, awesome. there, in the mix. So we're thankful two Southern teams are in it, right, Chris? Yeah, awesome. For all us Southern cooks and getting to watch Southern baseball tonight. There'll be a lot of chili, yeah, chicken will. and dumplings, fried chicken, vegetable soup. That, that's what my sister's having oh, be with good. cornbread. Mm -hmm. Um. All that good stuff. 
It goes a long way, and it don't take the woman or the man, whoever's cooking, a huge, it don't make a huge mess and have a lot of cleanup when you make a super stew, does it? Now, when you do dumplings, you really want you really want to mix it up kind of dry. It's a little bit different than mixing up biscuits. And barbecue, There'll probably some people make barbecue. Yeah. In the world, too. especially in Texas. What in the world what? happened? I guess this thing opened or something. The pressure. Ooh. Under pressure. Are y'all under pressure, y'all that are in Texas? Right. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> right, Chris? I guess not. Y'all under pressure like my chicken over here. <laughs> oh, if you ain't seen me in a while, I cut my hair. Can you tell? I cut my hair. I cut it myself. And it's really kind of dirty. We've been out on the boat today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I came in and took a nap. And so I didn't uh, get all dolled up for the Braves game. I did put on some lipstick, though. Mm -hmm. So good to see everybody. We're going to... We're going to uh, need these a few times. I told Chris I was going to get a little bit of flour on his jersey. He said, I don't mind as long as you don't get no grease on it. I said, well, there won't be no grease involved in chicken and dumplings. He said, well, then that'll be fine. So you just want to knead these and get you some flour in them. And you want them to be kind of uh, leathery in a way. You don't want them to be tough. But they got to be strong enough to hold together. A lot of people make their dumplings and they get them too puffy and they just fall apart. Now, we made dumplings that you roll out and cut growing up. That's what we grew up on. If you grew up on a drop dumpling and you got it easier, just drop it in there. <laughs> but we roll ours out. And the biggest science to it over the years, I have learned how to talk to y'all that want to know how to make something, when it comes to dumplings, when you roll out your dumplings, the last time I did this, I did it down in Cedartown, I think I had to use a glass, uh, but anyway, when you roll them out, and you pick up the sheet, it needs to stay together, if it falls apart, then you know you ain't got enough flour in it, they need to be thin too. And this is self-rising flour, some people ask if it was plain. No, it's self-rising. So it's already got the salt and baking powder in it. The only difference is I don't use buttermilk. Why? Because they tend to want... Buttermilk makes uh, dough stickier. It makes a better biscuit altogether. Buttermilk does. But it makes a stickier dough. And therefore, your dumplings are more apt to want to fall apart when they hit the broth. Now, we're going to pick this up and see how they're doing. See, these are perfect. They're soft. They're kind of spongy to the touch. They fell, but it took them a while. That's exactly how you want them to be. These are perfectly, um, these will bake perfect dumplings. Okay. So, now all we got to do is make sure we roll them out good and cut them. Thank you, Chris. My big jug of milk in my way, yeah, I could see that hitting the floor any second. Yep. Then you wouldn't have any for breakfast, would you? Nope. All right, so today I'm doing a shortcut method, and I'm using a pizza cutter to cut my dumplings. Mama used the side of a fork, and that's what I typically do some of my videos. And I put uh, the old intro back on some of my new videos where at the end of the intro, I'm cutting up dumplings and it's in line with the piano, which is pretty cool. Um, that was an intro I made probably back in 2018. And so sometimes I still throw it in there and use it. But of course, when we're live, we don't have an intro. Now, by the time we get over here and start dropping these, our broth's going to be good and hot. Mm 
And we're going to sprinkle these a little bit with some flour because before you put them in your pot, in your boiling water, you want to sprinkle them a little bit so that they um, thicken the broth. You want your chicken and dumplings to be nice and thick and have a good, thick, super, you know, it needs to be, I don't know what you call it, have some depth to it. It needs to be good. Yeah. Now you can put on here how long you've been watching the Braves. I've been watching the Braves since 1978 or 77, and I probably watch about 90 games a year at least. Tammy gets so aggravated. She'll come in here, are you watching baseball? <sighs> Y'all, throughout the years, the Colored Valley Cooks have so many nights that I edited our video while he was watching the Braves. At least it gave me more time to, for y'all. I always say, I don't know why you're surprised or why you act like it's, you know I'm going to watch it. You didn't get me sprinkling. Oh, no. All right, show them. But I got you. I sprinkled all of these with flour. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. And then you can just politely pick them up, put them in your bowl, and bring them over here to your broth. Just like that. Dumplings. And that flour is going to thicken that broth. That's a vital part of it. Don't leave that part out either. You can tell by looking at our pot over there, it's smoking. So it's going good. This All person right. says they were a fan since they were in Boston. Good Lord. Since they were what? They used to be in Boston, then they were in Milwaukee. Who was? And then they, the Braves. For real? Yeah. So they're saying they've been watching watch them since Lord. they were in Boston. So That's you, a real Braves fan. Okay, baby, we're going to trade places. Okay, y'all can see the boiling broth, and I mean, it's hard to kind of see because it's boiling and it's smoking, it's smoking hot, and this is our chicken back here. Let me put this over here so y'all can see it, and it's, it's cooked to pieces. What I do is I boil it on top of the stove for about an hour, hour and a half, so that the chicken is all the pieces done. It's still kind of frozen, so we're going to... We're just warming that up. And we're going to start dropping these dumplings. And once they hit this boiling water, um, it's going to take them about 15 minutes to really cook. Now, some people just drop them one at a time. But most of the time, I throw them in there. If you flour them good, you should be able to, you know, put them in there. Yeah, they're not going to stick. And them be in pretty good shape. So what I do is I drop them and this thing is not as hot as I want it. What's it doing? This stove. Let's let it, well I need to add them all. The stove only gets stuff as hot as it, you know, it was boiling when we, but now it's cooled down so I'm going to clean this up while those are, uh, you want to put the lid on it so it'll heat up? I'm going to, but I wanted them to watch it for a second. Oh, which? Just let them see the dumplings yeah. for a second. It's, uh. Now, when you do your dumplings, you can take you a spoon and kind of dip them down in there good, but don't stir them, okay? Try not to stir them. Okay. We're going to add a little salt and pepper to them. Now, I know i got flour on me, but it ain't going to hurt none. It's just flour. And we're cook cooking for viewers tonight. We have Kim and Walter Honeycutt here with us. We've had a really good time, haven't we, Chris? Yep. You know what? I'm, I just can't help it, but I'm going to do it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a little butter to it. Just a little. And then we're going to add our cream of chicken. We forgot to put our cream of chicken in there. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Throw it in there. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I like to mix it in the broth before I put the dumplings in. Here's our cream of chicken. Now, my granny didn't put cream of chicken in her chicken and dumplings. My mama didn't. 
But let me tell you, guess who does? Tammy. Tammy does. Now, my kids can say my mama did, hmm. and it's better with it. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, just try it if you've never tried it. I have, I've had so many people tell me they made my chicken and dumplings, and they were the best they've ever had. And so is my potato soup. Listen, if y'all haven't decided what to make for supper tonight, for your World Series game, throw some potato soup together. Oh, yeah. Boy, it's easy to throw together. Uh, you ain't got to boil a chicken first. Mm -hmm. And if you make my recipe, you're going to be in hog heaven. Mm -hmm. Not hog heaven, because that's barbecue. But uh, potato heaven. Okay. All right, we're going to put a lid on it. We're going to let these continue to cook for about 10 minutes. And then we'll open it back up and I'll show them to you. Not really. Oh, you don't? All right, this is too high. Now, once you make your dumplings, you better make sure they're not sticking to the bottom of the pan, and uh, put a you know put a lid on them. And you can see these look really good already. They're nice and thick broth. The broth is thick, and uh, they're cooking up good. Once they start cooking a few minutes, you can actually stir them. All right, we're going to take our chicken and go ahead and throw it in there. And if you came in late, she had the chicken in that pot because it got frozen in the refrigerator. So it was just kind of, it wasn't real frozen, but it was like, no, I didn't, I wanted lucky. my dumplings in a boiling uh, broth, mm -hmm. and I was afraid the chicken was going to be too cold. Yeah. So we heated it up separate. And now we've added our chicken, and we will add a little bit of salt, a little more salt and pepper to it. I'm going to taste it and see how salty it is before I add more salt. Because remember that your dumplings are made with self-rising flour, so they have salt. The cream of chicken has salt. It just needs a little bit, not a lot. So just a little bit more salt. And I love pepper and anything chicken. My chicken and dumplings, my chicken pot pie. It's good with pepper, ain't it, Chris? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to show y'all our dumplings. In about five more minutes, I can uh, plate some of these and let you see them. But let's make sure those dumplings are done all the way through before we do that. Not me. Oh, yeah. Here's our chicken and dumplings. I'm going, I'm going to uh, get some out and put them on a plate for y'all just so that y'all can see how pretty they look. And then we're going to put a lid on them and our company comes at six and I'm frying them up some okra too. Sure am. Mm -hmm. Chicken and dumplings. There you have it. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Let's see how good the dumplings are together. And that's the, about the thickness you want them. They swell up because they're self-rising. They're nice and soft. And they're delicious. Get you a bowl of that. And enjoy the World Series. Here's the dumplings. Good stuff. Kim, if you're watching, you're going to love these. That's a home run. Kim. It's a home run. Mmm. Yummy. We're going to have fun tonight, ain't we? That's it, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day, and we thank you so much for watching Collard Valley Cooks. Y'all want to look at my dumplings one more time? Will we cook? Like Mama did. Mm -hmm. Bye, y'all. Love ya.